things that are unique to uh, San Mateo and uh, Santa Clara uh, County. And let's look at some of this. We'll look at the things that are unique uh, to the uh, Bay Area. Uh, they talk about existing housing stock. Many properties in this area have been developed at different times under different building codes. They may not be able to accommodate current or future personal. Wait a minute. Or they may not be able to accommodate current or future personal property items, including but not limited to electric cars. Regardless of its age, the property should be inspected by a competent property inspector and buyers should obtain all additional inspections recommended by any inspector or as buyer may deem necessary for determining the actual condition of the property. Property components, appliances, fixtures, systems, and materials may have varying degrees of re remaining useful life and could fail without notice. Not all aspects of the property may comply with the current code, zoning, health, and safety. This is just generally talking about things that may not be permitted or things that may not be built according to the code. Okay? So, uh, I mean, they talk about things like the Chinese drywall. If you don't know what Chinese drywall is, let me tell you the story about Chinese drywall. Who knows what Chinese drywall is about? That's right. So, yeah, there's some, one time there was some Chinese drywall that was shipped from China uh, to the United States. And this drywall were installed in several eastern states. Very few in California, but mostly in eastern states. Now, they are defective, the drywall. If uh, they come in contact with moisture, they will give out certain gas, okay, that smells. And this gas not only smells, but this gas can actually corrode your plumbing. So, you know, this is just an advisory that talks about uh, things that are not Perfect, okay? Existing housing stock. Now, I think it, it, it's an advisory that they put in to, uh, to alert the consumer about past problems with property in, involving uh, different types of building materials, okay? So that's what Chinese drywall is about, okay? <laughs> now, here you have something else called deferred maintenance. You know what deferred maintenance means? It means that the homeowner has lived there for many, many years and he doesn't maintain his property. If you have a homeowner who doesn't maintain his property, there could be many different problems like leaky roof. You know, the roofs have to be maintained and uh, he doesn't uh, maintain his uh, AC or heater or certain things. Okay, so this deferred maintenance will decrease the lifespan and functionality of many of uh, these components. And it says buyers should seek reliable advice from appropriate professionals and plan budget for maintenance and future repairs. Okay? Floors and walls. The amount and placement of seller's personal property may make a visual inspection of floors and walls difficult. You know, when you walk into a property, right, sometimes uh, when uh, the property is either staged or the seller still lives there, you're going to have personal properties that may block certain walls. You know, I wanted a case where the sofa actually blocked the back, uh, the, the back of the sofa actually uh, was leaning against the wall as a result of which uh, the inspector, including the agents, including the buyer, missed uh, the existence of mold on the wall. 
because the, the personal property was actually covering uh, the mall. So it actually resulted in a lawsuit. Uh, guess uh, who won that lawsuit? Seller did. Well, unless the the, the seller, unless the uh, what do you call that, the uh, unless the seller was aware of the mall and committed fraud. What if the seller also was not aware? It's possible the seller was not aware, though, right? I mean, if you want to win a lawsuit against the seller for fraud, you have to prove that the seller was aware of the mall. Now, if the buyer could not see it, it's just too bad, right? If the agents could not see it, agents has no liability, right? So this is just to warn the buyer that sometimes uh, certain walls could be covered, okay, because of personal property, okay? The existence of the existence of certain types of floor coverings such as carpeting and rugs, some wall coverings such as wallpaper and paneling, and the presence of furniture may prevent buyers, inspectors, and brokers from fully inspecting condition of floors and walls. Uh, there's another advisory that tends to protect who? Actually protect the agents. So basically warning the buyer that sometimes uh, this personal property may cover certain defect about the property, the, the real property, okay? All right, tempered glass. Many homes contain non-tempered glass in areas where tempered glass is required by building codes. Again, this is talking about old building, right? Where uh, it's not built according to the building code, so there's no tempered glass. During buyer's inspection period, if any, buyer should have a contractor identify any glass that is not properly tempered. Buyers may want to replace any non-tempered glass with tempered glass to reduce the risk of injury. Well, having tempered glass and not having tempered glass means the risk of injury. If it's tempered, it doesn't break as easily, right? So it's safer. What is tempered? Tempered is specially treated. Yeah, especially heat treated, right? Or, or reinforced. Okay. All right, let's talk about this number four here. She said this PRDS form is very different from uh, the uh, standard uh, zip form, uh, the car advisory. It's got stuff that is not on the uh, car advisory. We don't see this stuff on car advisory. Residential fireplace disclosure. Residential wood burning is the leading source of wintertime air pollution in the Bay Area, and studies have confirmed there are significant health effects from exposure to fine particulate matter found in wood smoke. The smoke of uh, the Bay Area Air Quality Management District established the wood smoke rule, regulation six, rule three, to reduce wintertime smoke pollution and protect public health. The Wood Smoke Group requires anyone selling, renting, or leasing property in the Bay Area to disclose the potential health hazards from air pollution caused from burning wood. Fine particular matter, also known as PM2.5, can travel deep into the respiratory system, bypass the lungs, and enter the blood system. Exposure may cause short-term and long-term health effects including eye, nose, and throat irritation, reduced lung function, asthma, heart attacks, chronic bronchitis, cancer, and premature uh, death. Exposure to uh, uh, fine particulates can worsen existing uh, respiratory uh, conditions. This one is just talking about, uh, you know, people burning wood, right, uh, during the winter months, and actually it has some health uh, consequence. So uh, anyone here you use uh, wood to keep warm? What do you use? Gas? Heater. Okay. I don't use uh, firewood anymore. Solar panel leases. Uh, this is actually already on the uh, car form. You know what solar leases? Uh, sometimes when you when you when you are the listing agent or even the selling agent. You know, some sellers forgot they, they actually leased the solar panel. And then uh, just before close escrow, mm -hmm. they realized that the solar panels were leased. Well, actually, you're, you're lucky if you realize it before escrow close. Now, what if you're a seller? You sell your property, right? And you forgot. 
that you have solar panels. You actually lease the solar panel and you close the escrow. Now we got a problem. And the solar company say, well, the lease has not expired. Can the solar company come after the seller or the buyer? Yeah. Seller, because it's the seller who signed the contract. So if you're the listing agent, always check to see if there's any leased solar panels. Because if you have any leased solar panels, what do you need to do to the contract? Transfer to a new buyer, only if they want to. That's why I guess here's, here's the, here's, this is how I normally handle it. All right, if I have a, if I'm a seller, I have a solar panel that's leased. My preference would be to transfer the lease to the buyer. If I can't transfer the lease to the buyer, I don't want to sell to this buyer. So if you're a buyer, uh, most of the time you have to agree to the transfer. And also it benefits you because you save electricity. If you can assume the lease of the solar panel, uh, you can actually save electricity. But, but uh, actually, uh, I should say, you, you buy it, unless it's not good. Anyway, so that's a... Buyers do not want to transfer. Most buyers would say yes. New construction warranties, uh, defects, and lawsuits. Builders of new construction are required to provide certain warranties and information about how to report claims but may not be required to complete the transfer disclosure statement. Did you know that if you buy a brand new home, the developer is not required to give you transfer disclosure statement? You know, how, under how many situations are transfer disclosure statements not required? New homes. Probate sale, probate sale, bank owned property, okay, and trust sale. These type of transactions do not require transfer disclosure statement, okay? Uh, yeah, usually if the bank, if your bank's own bank owned property, they are not required to give you a transfer disclosure statement. Uh, you know what SB 800 is? I need to explain to you what SB 800 is. Now let's say you buy a new home and uh, there is a defect on the property. Can you immediately go to the court to sue the developer? No. SB 800 requires that you go through a mediation process with the builder. You need to give the builder an opportunity to fix the problem before you can sue them. Okay, that's what SB 800 is about. Okay, that's it. Number seven. Number seven, we all know already, square footage, number of rooms and age, right? Uh, you know, can you sue a seller if uh, the actual square footage is less than what was disclosed? Um, you know, most of the time you cannot succeed, especially if it's only a small difference. If it's a big difference, it's a different story. Say, for example, you buy a home that has 2,000 square feet and they misrepresent it. They advertise as 2,200 square feet. You know, you try to sue for your damage, most of the time it's hard to get it. Because usually there's advisory telling you already. This type of advisory actually protects the seller. It also protects the agents, okay? So about how much can you sue them? Uh, I, I don't know, there's no definite answer. But the city record, they should present something with the city recorder. Anyway, um, most of the time you can't, okay? You can't win on this type of lawsuit. Okay. Lot size and boundaries, same thing. You know, if um, it says here, only a land surveyor can reliably determine actual lot size, property corners, and the exact location of boundaries. Statements regarding these issues in the MLS advertisements, computer generated property profiles, data and property tax assessor records, or any disclosures are 
often approximation. Do you see that? So if it's advertised at 6,000 square, uh, square feet lot size, and you actually end up with 5,700, no chance to sue, okay? Most of the time, there's no chance to sue. Septic tanks and wastewater treatment system regulations. Uh, you know, this one talks about septic tank, okay? It's only relevant if you have a septic tank system of the property. And this one talks about sewers and sewer laterals. Now, if you uh, sell a property in uh, Alameda County, chances are you have to comply with the sewer lateral requirement, okay? Especially in Alameda County. I don't know about Santa Clara County, though. You guys know anything about sewer lateral in Santa Clara County? I don't think I ever heard about it in Santa Clara County. I think it's said Alameda County. Now, if you don't know what the sewer lateral is about, uh, this law was passed uh, probably around 2012. When I was doing my uh, radio show in the Bay Area back in 2012, uh, a new law was passed, the sewer lateral. It was passed to protect the Bay because if you don't have sewer lateral, uh, it will cause contamination in, in the Bay Area. So they're trying to protect the Bay. That's why they require every uh, property owner, before they can sell their property, they have to comply with the sewer lateral requirements. Okay? If you don't have one, you're going to have to install one. Water and well systems, I'm going to uh, skip that. Okay? Uh, basically, it's talking about uh, property may be served by a well, spring, public, or private water systems or combination there, in which case buyers should consider requesting that sellers complete the PRDS well and private water system checklist. Well may contain bad bacteria, chemical, metals, minerals, and may emit orders. So this is about well. Recent studies have revealed that some wells in Morgan Hill and San Martin contain the chemical chlorate. Other wells in the Santa Clara County may be contaminated by this or other chemicals. So this is an advisory to the buyer that if they buy certain properties that have wells, they need to be aware that some of these wells are contaminated. So if they want to know more information, they just go to the website or call up a phone number to get more information, okay? Water shortages and conservation, water conservation, plumbing fixtures. Uh, this one is talking about their, the non-compliant plumbing fixtures shall be replaced with water cons uh, conserving uh, plumbing fixtures. There's a law that actually requires that. So this is to let the buyer know that, you know, there's such a requirement. Uh, a single family, all single family residents, if an alteration or improvement is undertaken for which a permit is required, compliance is a precondition of final permit approval. So after January 1st, 2017, all single family residents built before 1994 must be brought into compliance whether or not the property is being altered repaired. So uh, basically they want everybody to have uh, water conserve, uh, conserving fixtures to save water because of the drought that we have in uh, California. Okay, Commercial, the law kicks into effect in uh, 2019 but the residential is already in effect. Wet weather conditions. Uh, not much to talk about on this one. Water intrusion. Uh, it says here, the cost of repairing and remediating water intrusion damage and its causes can be significant. The existence and cause of water intrusion is often difficult to detect. An absence of visual evidence of water intrusion does not mean that such intrusion does not exist. Basically telling the, an average buyer that 
you know, in any home, okay, especially the old one, there may be water intrusion that the agents cannot see or the seller might not be aware. So it is up to the buyer to hire the, the right professional to check for this type of problem, okay? But I think an average home inspector would not do some type of this type of checking. Groundwater, natural springs, and water runoff. Uh, you know, just to warn the buyer that there are properties that have natural springs and rainwater runoff issues that may result in standing water, dry rot, flooding, mold, foundation failure, or other potential water damage to improvements. Frankly, all of this advisory, they are put in. It's a CYA thing, okay, for the agents, all right? Cover the agent. Priest and covered, same thing. Uh, maybe if a property is close to creek or covered, it is prone to what? Cutting. So this is kind of like to warn the buyer that if they have a property that is close to covered or creek or ditch, uh, you know, there might be a flooding concern. So they need to get flood insurance. Levies, we don't worry about that. Pets destroying pests and organisms, uh, we're talking about what? Termites. Okay. Uh, these days in residential purchase, that's the standard uh, car agreement require the seller to provide termite report? No. Then the car agreement, purchase agreement, does not require the seller to provide termite report. So if the buyer wants to uh, get termite done, the buyer have to take care of that themselves, okay? Pet animals or pests. This one is talking about, you know what, in some properties where they, they have pets in the past, what do you worry about when there was a pet in the on the property before? The urine from the pets. You know, when you have pets on the on the property, sometimes you don't smell the urine during the winter months, but come summer, the smell is really bad. So always be aware whenever there were pets on the property. Uh, you know, there's always that risk that. The pet smell, the urine smell, may require a lot of efforts to remove them. Okay, just be aware of something like that. Endangered Species Act, we don't worry about it unless you are buying a vacant land. Okay, you know what Endangered Species Act means? It means that there are certain types of animals or insects uh, that are being protected because they are they are becoming extinct. Extinct means what? It will no longer be around. That's what extinct means. So there are laws that protect this uh, endangered species. Power lines and power plants. So this is basically to educate the buyer that uh, there are power lines and. Uh, Basically, to warn the buyer, these power lines may affect the value, development, use, and enjoyment of the property, okay? So just an advisory thing, whether the buyer really care, it's up to them, but they've been advised, okay? Underground utilities and pipe. Underground utilities and pipes. Some communities have begun the process of relocating utility lines underground in order to remove the utility poles in the neighborhood. These projects can result in special tax assessment, increased costs for homeowners, and temporary disruptions of the neighborhood. Water, natural gas, and other types of fuels are delivered to communities through a network of underground pipes that are connected to a residential and commercial uh, properties. Some areas have been adversely impacted by disruptions in service or damage to those underground pipes. Uh, just another advisory thing. Usually it doesn't happen, so we don't worry about it. Soils and geologic conditions. Uh, this is nothing new. You know, uh, what can you tell the buyer 
not much other than the fact that uh, houses are built on soils, right? Mm -hmm. And underneath the house, usually it's, uh, it's made up of uh, either rocks or soils. And uh, this, these materials could actually cause the building to settle, okay? Uh, so just an, another advisory. Easements, encroachment, public trails, access rights, private rights, and maintenance agreement. Uh, another education thing, they want to buy about easements. Okay. Views and view ordinances. You know, views are not protected in California. Did you know that? No protection. So when you buy the house, there's nice view, right? <clears throat> few years later, you could lose that view, okay? There's no protection of views in California, okay? Unless the CCNR actually restricted. There are some CCNRs uh, that actually don't allow the homeowner to grow their trees beyond a certain height. Yeah. Now, if it's, if it's stated in the CCNR, then your view may be protected. Now, let's say, for example, uh, you bought this home, it has got view, right? And then a couple of years later, <coughs> The neighbor in front of you has got a tree that grew up to uh, a, a very tall height and then one day it blocks your view, right? And then you look into the CCNR, CCNR only limits to certain height and if it's beyond certain height, you can actually enforce it and require the uh, homeowner in front of you to trim the tree so you can protect your view. But that is only if the CCNR says that though. Not every CCNR actually gives you the protection for the views, okay? Not necessarily. Some communities have CCNR, <laughs> even though you are not a condominium. Uh, they call it the deed restriction, actually. Deed restriction, okay? Uh, tree ordinances, we already know, right? You know, there's st street tree disclosure. I have not covered street tree disclosure yet, but in San Jose, uh, you have to make certain disclosure about street trees. Uh, there are certain laws that require uh, trees uh, along the street. So uh, the, the seller has to state whether the seller has complied with the street tree ordinance or not. You know what it says here? Several municipalities have enacted uh, ordinances to regulate and control the removal of trees. They don't allow people to remove trees in San Jose. Some cities have identified heritage or other significant trees that must be protected or preserved in certain areas. Permits may be required to cut down, destroy, remove, or relocate the designated uh, trees. You know that not just in the Bay Area, though, if you go down to Southern California, you go to places where they have a large lot, they have the old oak tree, you can't simply cut the old oak tree. They are protected. In order to cut the old oak tree, you need a permit from the city, okay? Something to keep in mind of. All right, and then it says, uh, buyers should read applicable tree preservation ordinances, check with relevant government entities, and consult with an arborist during the inspection period if any to determine the health of trees and whether or not any special action can or must be taken with respect to any trees on the property. City of San Jose, for example, requires sellers to make specific disclosures to buyers regarding street trees on a separate form prior to the sale of residential property. We already know this. If you ever sold a property in San Jose, there's a separate disclosure for street trees. Okay? If property is in the city of San Jose, buyers should not close escrow without receiving the seller's street tree disclosure form. It's just a disclosure form, a one-page disclosure form. Okay. Uh, land lease. Uh, you guys have not come across land lease yet. Land lease. Uh, you know, they, sometimes uh, when you buy a piece of property, you think you're buying uh, the land, but you're not because uh, you may be buying a lease. So just be aware of that. Okay. Uh, you buy a land that's fee simple, right? There's no fee simple. It could expire sometime. Right? Yeah. Unit permit zoning and code compliance. Uh, this one basically warned the buyer about 
Some construction may not be permitted. That's all. Future repairs, uh, replacement, uh, placements, and uh, remodels. Uh, it says here various federal, state, and local government agencies impose limitations and restrictions regarding house size, configuration, design, construction, and landscaping materials and development of real property depending upon the general location of the property. For example, if it is in the coastal zone, above waterways or in a designated watershed area or environmental protection area. You know, some places, uh, the government uh, code uh, usually, I mean, the uh, city code or some some code simply does not allow you to build a house that is bigger than a certain size, okay? So this is to warn the buyer that there may be such restriction on future uh, construction. Smoke alarms and carbon monoxide devices. Uh, remember, when you sell a property, it is the seller's responsibility to make sure proper smoke alarms are installed and carbon monoxide devices are installed, okay? Metro safety and security uh, requirements. Uh, you know, when you fill out the car form, uh, there are actually conditions that talk about who's going to pay for any retrofit. Usually, we, we make the seller pay for it, okay? Retrofit means that maybe it's not safe. The government may go back and say, we want you to make it safe. safe. That's what retrofit means, yeah. okay? Breaking, this is to warn the uh, buyer that, you know, the seller may give you a set of keys you are advised to change the lock, okay? And online photos and information. This is to warn the uh, buyer that uh, the online photos are for marketing purposes. Whatever that you see online does not reflect what the property actually look like, okay? Usually you can do Photoshop on it, right? Yeah. You know, uh, I've been fortunate though. The ones that I took for Sunnyview and Berkeley, they turn out to be very pretty photos. Okay. $99. Yeah, ninety-nine dollars. That's pretty good. Okay. EPA requirements for pre nineteen seventy-eight housing. Uh, oh, okay. So uh, it says here the EPA required contractors be certified before performing work in homes built before nineteen seventy-eight. Well, this one is about lead work, okay? So if you're going to be, uh, you know, pre-1978, uh, paint actually contained lead, right? Mm -hmm. After 1978, they don't allow lead in paint. So if uh, you need to hire a contractor uh, to do a lead work or remove lead, the EPA requires that the contractor be certified, okay? Historical uh, designation, Coastal Commission, and other restrictions on improvement and land use. You know, there are some buildings that have historical significance. Now, if it's one of those historical buildings, uh, then uh, you cannot change the architecture, okay? Or you can even, you cannot even demolish it. Rental property. Uh, Oh, you know what? Recently, there was a news on uh, bucks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. A, a family actually sued the hotel because there was bugs on the property and got $540,000. That's right. Now, there's a law. Now, there's a law that's effective uh, July 1st, 2017, right? Landlords must provide a statutory bed bug notice to new tenants and must comply with any other state regulations to eradicate bed bugs. This is a brand new law. So you got a new tenant that just uh, come in, right? Mm -hmm. And right now we're after July 1st. So uh, you are supposed to warn the tenant if there are bugs on the property, okay? In the future. Well, would you rather give the disclosure or not give the disclosure? The disclosure is mandatory. The rental? Yeah. Rental, right? Yeah, rental. Is there a standard form for that? Um, 
No, no, this is July 1st, also very recent. Have you seen a, a car form for the discount? Yeah, yeah. There is a car form? Yeah. 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 There's a disclosure on bad bugs, right? Okay, but anyway. Okay, but anyway, so fortunately for you guys, the car form actually has the disclosure, right? Okay, good. Okay. Uh, Mellow rules, we already know about Mellow rules, we're not going to talk about that. Supplemental uh, property tax, there's nothing new. A uh, PACE is the same as CAR. Uh, you know what PACE is about? Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, people borrow money uh, to improve their property under the PACE program. PACE stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy. Now, if people borrow money uh, to uh, conserve uh, energy and uh, water to make certain improvements that cons help them conserve energy and water. They can actually get a loan from the government if they borrow money for the improvement. That will be actually a lien against the property. So uh, something for the buyer to be aware of because uh, and this lien actually stays with the property now. So if you are the buyer, uh, it says here actually, uh, through pays of property owners may finance such projects as adding insulation or installing more energy efficient uh, furnaces, drought tolerant landscaping, etc. Buyers and sellers are cautioned that these finance bonds become a line item obligation on future property tax bills. So something for your buyer to be aware of if there's any uh, pace lien. And are usually not listed on prelim. Ah, worst thing is that it's not listed on the prelim title report. So if you read the title report, you don't even know it exists. But uh, if that's the case, how are you going to find out though? Well, and then it's also say that some lenders may not allow pace financing because it affects their security interest. Buyers and sellers are advised to consult with qualified tax financial legal advisors concerning the ramifications of an existing PACE loan and applying for a PACE loan. Sellers should disclose the non-existence of and any other information regarding a PACE financing relating to the property. You know, because the PACE lien actually becomes like a tax on the property, if you're a buyer, you're actually paying an extra tax. But if you are the seller, you are required to disclose. If you have a pace lien, you are required to disclose it though. Okay. Third time, California withholding, that one is nothing new. Debt on the property, nothing new. TDS, nothing new. Natural hazard disclosure, nothing new. Geologic hazards, earthquake fault zones and seismic hazard zone, nothing new. Fire hazard, same old, same old. Environmental hazard, same old, same thing. Underground storage tank, same. Government services. Basically, this is to, to warn the buyer that there may not be any uh, certain governmental services in some area, okay? Uh, and the buyer should investigate this. Schools. Yeah, this is basically to warn the buyer that they may decide to buy a property because of good school district, but then the uh, they may not have enough space available for uh, upcoming school years. So even if they buy this property, they may have to wait before their kid can go to school over there. Okay, noise and odors. Uh, the most common one, of course, is the bark. Right. If you if a property is close to bark, of course you're gonna have noise problem. And freeway too. I got one. I sold one that has a freeway noise, but I'm taken care of through the advisory. Okay. So in case you forgot to disclose, is right there. See in the advisory. Okay. Smoking ordinances. Uh, the counties of San uh, San Clara and uh, San Mateo has, as well as some cities in those counties, have or in the process of enacting smoking ordinances regulating smoking uh, pollution from a variety of tobacco and non-tobacco devices within some types of uh, residential property. Uh, this regulation may limit or affect where smoking is permitted. 
Okay. Uh, the smokers' responsibilities on secondhand smoke and other issues. Uh, marijuana and drug labs. It says here, although California law now permits some cultivation, possession, and use of marijuana, federal law recognizes no lawful use for marijuana and legal and federal criminal penalties regarding marijuana remain in effect. So even though uh, state law legalized uh, uh, growth of marijuana, federal law does not. So basically just to warn the uh, buyer, that's the situation here. Okay. Crime, we'll skip that. Wire fraud, scam, free that. Freeway, highway, street, skip that. Trains and barge. Just to warn people about the noise. High speed rail, I guess about the noise also. Okay. Insurance. Uh, certain requirements about the insurance. Oh, you know what? You guys heard about the California Fair Plan? In some hillside area, no insurance will cover. Only California Fair Plan. Okay? Something, yeah, something for you to know. Insurance? Some areas, hillside, many insurance companies will not insure. So you have to go with the California Fair Plan. Okay, but one thing you have to know about California Fair Plan, uh, there may be some things that are not covered that would be covered in uh, regular insurance. Things like uh, if you have a water pipe that breaks, water pipe sudden bursts, it's not covered under California Fair Plan, but it's covered under the the usual uh, property insurance. Okay, something for you to to know. All right. So, but sometimes the buyer don't have a choice because uh, if the develop uh, the insurance company would not insure, you have to go with the California Fair Plan. Title insurance. Uh, we won't cover that. Home warranty, common interest development. It's all covered in. Uh, Private transfer fee. Uh, I haven't come across for a property by the, or maybe once or twice. Private transfer fee. Uh, this is actually imposed by the CCNR. It's not by the government. Non confidentiality of offers. This is to warn the buyer that sellers are not required to keep the buyer's offers confidential. Okay. Liquidated damages. You know what? You guys uh, got to be careful about liquidated damages. Whenever you have a liquidated damages clause, it requires the buyer signature and the seller signature, or else it's not valid. If you don't remember what a liquidated damages clause is, if I'm a seller, the buyer put down $20,000 as a deposit, and the buyer breached the contract. And if I have a liquidated damage clause, do I need to prove my damage or I can just sue for the 20000 I can just sue for the 20000 right? Now, let's say, for example, uh, I enter into a contract with a buyer for 650000 And the deposit is 3%, which is about 20000 right? And then the buyer breached the contract. And after the buyer breached the contract, I sold the property for 700000 Okay, and uh, if I don't have a valid liquidated damage, can I sue the buyer for the twenty thousand or or not? If I don't have a valid liquidated damage, I cannot sue the buyer because I actually make money. After he breached the contract, I made fifty thousand extra, so I don't have any loss. Whereas if I have a liquidated damage clause. I can keep the fifty thousand dollars gain, and I can still keep the buyer's twenty thousand. That's why you need to have a valid liquidated damage clause. So if you 
have this, you can keep the twenty thousand. That's right. You can you can make the extra fifty thousand, and you can still keep the twenty thousand. But if you don't have the liquidated damage clause, you because you them. you actually make money, you did not lose money. That's why you cannot keep the twenty thousand. Okay. All right, mediation, arbitration. Only talk about that legal action. Regional issue. Okay, this is actually more uh, uh, related to the two counties. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna pick and choose since we we ran out of time. Okay, uh, pick and choose the one that I think might be important. Uh, 3R report, last time we did the daily city uh, listing, we didn't do the 3R report before listing, right? It would have been better if we had done the 3R report before we put it on the market, right? Because uh, if you're in daily city, you're trying to sell a property there, uh, you actually required to get a 3R report. So what's a 3R report? A 3R report is uh, a report on the uh, construction of the uh, property, okay? And basically, uh, it is something that the seller have to pay for. Hey, Leo, how much did we you know, sell the pay? $150? That's right, pay $150 and get the 3R report, okay? Uh, 3R report is something that is required to close ASCO in uh, Daily City. Half Moon Bay, Hillsboro, okay. uh, you know if you're selling a property in uh, Hillsboro, you say the Hillsboro Municipal Court requires the uh, issuance of a permit for possession and use of a home alarm system. These permits cannot be assigned to the buyer as part of the sale. Buyers who are acquiring the property in Hillsborough, which is already equipped with a home alarm system, or who intend to install a home alarm system, must secure a new permit. So if you're selling a property or buying a property in Hillsborough, always be aware of the home alarm system because that requires a permit, and you need to get a permit. Okay. Mulberry Fire Sprinkler and Illuminated Address Number uh, Ordinances. So Mulberry, uh, they require that the fire sprinkler must be installed in the garage. So in Mulberry, if you own a property, you have to install fire sprinkler in the garage, okay? Uh, however, this requirement is only triggered when, the, when any addition alteration repair of the structure or building uh, where the cost exceeds a thousand dollars okay so if you're applying for a permit uh, if the cost exceeds a thousand bucks and it's a building permit so even if you apply for building permit they want you to install sprinklers in the garage if your cost of uh, uh, improvement is a thousand dollars or more okay all right Potola Valley Residential Data Report. This one I'll skip. Uh, San Mateo City Supplemental Flood Zone Disclosure. Uh, if you're selling a property in uh, San Mateo County, you need to be aware that buyer is advised to investigate the issue with the City of San Mateo. A third party provider natural hazard disclosures statements and their own insurance will determine the possible ramifications of expanding a flood designation to the value, use, and enjoyment of the property. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know about this requirement, so this is new to me. Santa Clara. Uh, Morgan Hill, Los Altos, Saratoga, Sunnyvale. Uh, it's all advisory stuff, okay? Some of which uh, we don't even care. All 
All right, so this is actually a very interesting advisory form in the PRDS that we do not get on a car form. So it's very local and it's actually very helpful to the buyer.